Dragon's Dogma 2 is my first Dragon Dogma game in the franchise. From back in the day when it was released on Xbox 360 and PS3, around 2012 when all my mates could gun on about it, I was that guy in the corner saying how it wasn't Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Well, fast forward more than a decade and Dragon's Dogma 2 is released on the 22nd of March 2024. And you bet, yeah boy got it. In this video I plan to get all the trophies and thus the Platinum Trophy in Dragon's Dogma 2. According to palpix.com, it's considered to be a 5 out of 10 for difficulty, can be completed in 70 to 100 hours, and the hardest trophy is being the hero. This video will contain spoilers, so to those who desire to play the game, you've been warned. We start the game being a captive on Volcanic Island, in an excavation site where we are first given the ability to pick or customise my character. I thought I recognised you. This led onto showcasing basic gameplay mechanics such as grabbing until things get dicey. We get attacked by Medusa and are giving our first taste in combat gameplay. Though inevitably we are forced to flee, thus landing us right onto our first bronze trophy of the game. First taste of freedom to escape the bonds of slavery. Later, we make our way to Melv, in which we have a flashback leading into the trophy Risen, where we regain our memories by receiving the Risen's charge. Waking up next to Urika was a pleasant surprise, though the journey beckoned, so we ventured out, escorted by Gregor, in search of an ox cart to Venworth. Along the way, we camped for some respite, which garnered us our next trophy, all intense adventure. After some time and many battles along the road, we eventually find the ox cart after a cyclops battle and start our merry way to Venworth. At the gates, we are met with Brant, who takes us into questioning. Here's where we get a seat of the proxy for arriving in Venworth trophy. We get one speed only from boarding an ox cart to do adventuring back at Melv. So along the way we find a broken bridge and even stranger enemies across it. We shoot it which miraculously falls down to make a bridge awarding me with the Cyclops abridged. Another bronze trophy for crossing a Cyclopean bridge. Quit playing dead is the next trophy we get from reviving two pawns simultaneously while I fought one of those crazy minotaurs. However, pushing on, we discover the fairy stone system in Dragon's Dogma 2, making travel way more easy, but sadly way more expensive too. 10,000 a pop is no cheap price for a newbie like me, though the port stone idea was pretty interesting as it enabled me to place teleport hubs anywhere on the map to my liking. Here we get the trophy just the stones throw away. We've arrived well enough. Many hours later we are approached and given a quest which allows us to purchase our own dwelling, which gave me a house in this economy trophy. For the bronze trophy, a pawn of many talents, all I had to do was teach Beast Boy a specialisation. While Affinity and Beyond was to raise a person's affinity to its maximum. We progress into the story by completing several quests from Bran, one being to disguise ourselves with the courtly tunic and breeches and attend the masquerade. Sneaking into the noble quarters, we encounter Wilhelmina by cussing the Rose Chateau and get my Macaulian delights. Wow. The saviour, a bronze trophy is obtained from using a wake stone and a dead NPC. Across the border, and I'm in, was from passing through the gate border at Rest Town and into Batal by using illicit means, in other words, hopping the bus without a pass.
but once we enter, enemies over this side of the wall were dramatically more challenging, which sped up the time for me to reach maximum rank in the vocation, giving me the trophy, the specialist. Moments later, I was awarded with versatile by heading to the closest vocation guild and testing out a few other vocations. Zero Destinies I received from changing my vocation to Mystic Spearhand and Trickster of the Trade from swapping it out to a Trickster. However, with much still needed to be done in Vermin, I headed back for a Noble's Night Out, which is to attend the Palace Masquerade and four more Raymond. Around about now is when I overheard Gars talking about this thing called the Phantom Ox Cart. This trophy was a bronze trophy called Are We There Yet? After that fiasco I feel the need to do more damage and acquire the magic archer class. So we make our way around the edge of the map until we reach Drabiner's Grotto or Hope You Brought a Lantern Trophy with which led beautifully into back to where it all began, returning to the volcanic islands. And no doubt we had a little bit of a dip in the hot spring for this will cure what ails ye, a branch trophy to soak in the hot spring. Strangely, I got a gameplay recording pause notification for the first time alongside it, which was a bit interesting. The quest pertaining to obtaining Magic Archer was to escort Gustav, Gustava to the Hot Springs, which after speaking to his wife awarded me with arrows and incantations. By doing this quest I obtained the Warfare Evocation by bringing new liquor from Erland in Batal to Lehman, who ironically is right next to the Hot Spring. This awarded me with Jack of All Trades, Master of All Trades. Wish Upon the Rift was the next bronze trophy which I simply had to set a pawn quest. Well, the next was Force I'd lost you from restoring the dead to life at a morgue or a charnel house. Roost of the Dragon was from reaching Dragon's Breath Tower. Followed by returning to Vermont for the Barbecue Maester, a bronze trophy for grilling every type of meat during the day or night. The Philanthropist was an annoying trophy where I had to raise affections with 50 people. I couldn't tell you how many in-game days this took, not to mention all the valuable resources I had to give away. However, after that was achieved, plenty of a reason to go around was easily obtained from witnessing a brawl break out in my dwelling amongst my admirers. The bronze trophy Harpy Joyride was achieved from riding a harpy. Along my merry way, farming for seeker tokens, I met an uncouth fellow known as the Headless Horseman, and which defeating him gave me the trophy before dawn breaks. Several hours just after that, I obtained the Collector for collecting 80 seeker tokens, one trophy I definitely wouldn't want to do again. Places. After meeting your boy Kratos, the next one was the Tourist, which was by far one of the worst trophies in this game for me. I've been trekked to many caves, I ultimately realised that many caves share the same name, so despite discovering many of these caves, technically they all ended up being one. Anything might learn in these depths. Naturally, fed up with spelunking in caves, I figured it was time for me to get four marks trophy. 
a first gold trophy of this game so far. I had to solve all the goddess of the riddles, ten conundrums. I did the first five part way through the game, but then returned later and got, got a free ride to our second location and finished the other five. I messed up the battle, so I just used the unmaking arrow to ensure I got the key for the eternal wake stone. And anyone who intends on getting them all in one playthrough, keep an eye on where you find your first seeker token. That particular one's a bit deadly. This next trophy was pretty simple. I had to reclaim my item stolen from a scavenger in battle. The trophy is called To the Victor Goes the Spoils. Here's where I use the Eternal Wakestone to perform a miracle for several people at once or Reaper's Scorn, a silver trophy. After, I strengthened my weapon in Wormfire for Dragonforged, which resulted in me hunting down Medusa in order to decapitate her head or off with its head trophy. I was unlucky in my first attempt to get a preserved Medusa's head, so I rested many times and tried it again, thus acquiring getting ahead. Third time lucky, I obtained an eye for an eye, a silver trophy for petrifying Medusa with a preserved Medusa's head. This branch trophy took a while for me to get properly, but I eventually got it after many attempts, re-griffing for taking flight on the griffin a second time. On the morrow, I obtained a badge of honour after lugging back into the game by acquiring a pawn badge from killing Cyclopses in, in other worlds. Followed by Gigantus, I hardly knew ye. A bronze trophy to defeat the Gigantus in a short span of time. I just used the unmade canary for this fight, it makes things simpler. This led nicely into the ending of the game whereby you face off against a dragon from the start. Become the Sovereign of Vernworth for the Peace Trophy. As greedy as one can be, I venture for more adventures and return back to the game to speak to a glowy man with a hood. This brought us to the true ending of Dragon's Dogma 2, ironically called Dragon's Dogma 2, by witnessing the unmoored world. I also got Italos for helping the Gigantus walk again. Here we had several tasks to achieve in a shorter time window, so I didn't waste much time in defeating the four bosses to hold the spread of the fog, which allowed me to attain the trophy, the hero, for overcoming all the trials in the unmoored world. This then allowed me to lead the people to safety from the unmoored worlds in enough time, coining me the Silver Tree Fever Guardian. From evacuating everybody from the towns, it brought Dragon's Dogma, a sword from the Dragonforged. Maybe this is a knock back to the first game, but maybe someone in the comments section can let me know as I haven't played the first one. Closure is a Silver Trophy 
for experiencing the end of the cycle which basically means completing the game or the unmod world portion. After the credits roll, we are thrown back into the title screen in which I still had one more trophy to get. I searched for net wide and far for this workaround of screwing up the sorcerer's appraisal quest line, but alas, I had to start a new game plus for the master of the maesters trophy. Once I arrived, I sped through that portion of the game to Vernworth and then to Rest Town to speak to the mage guy Miradin, give me his spell. I brought all minor shields along the way, stole Let There Be Light from his room and gave him Nation's Death Nail from my first playthrough. I then proved my friendship with his daughter Trisha, which I luckily had the turquoise ring from my first playthrough, and then I got Maelstorm. And no trophy pot. Strange as it was, I had to do some more investigation until I realised I hadn't got the Trickster's Maester to spell. So I ventured all the way to Batal again, snuck past the gate and made my way all the way to Luz where I found her real body above the shrine in which she awarded me her tome. Here I finally got Master of Maesters and undeniably the true Arisen, the Platinum Trophy. So, this whole Planet Run was kind of unusual for me. I absolutely love uh, Dragon's Dogma 2, especially experiencing the game for the first time after avoiding it for so long. Um, it took me like 87 hours to complete despite, you know, all the kerfuffle along the way. The amount of running you do in this game is like insane. I swear, at least half of the time I spent was just running to and from places getting attacked by hordes of just enemies and nonsense, man. In Batal, it did get a bit ridiculous, I feel, especially when the griffin like nose dives you the second you leave the town. Uh, not to mention enemies like in that part of the game are like way tougher. So like running away like in Vermin isn't like always an option. Though, I have got to admit, it's a sick game and I'm looking forward to whatever the team at Capcom decide to do with the franchise into the future. It is true to say that Dragon's Dogma 2 isn't necessarily a hard game. It makes up for that in how the game is designed. Uh, you literally can't really do anything quick, though being able to fast travel like in Fallout or Skyrim or those sorts of games would kind of ruin the dynamic of the game, in my opinion. Ultimately, I hope this video was as much fun watching as it was making. I thank all who took a gander and even more thanks to those who got to the end of the video. However, all forms are appreciated. That's me done with this Platinum Room, so I hope you all stay safe, stay risky, but most importantly, have a good one. That's all. Well.